are going live. Can you hear me? You can't yet. You might be able to hear me now. Hello, I am Lawrence Brown with Lost in the Pond. Already knew that if indeed you know me. Nobody knows me as well as my wife, who is today uh, on the, what What do we call it? You are my techie. I guess. Is that... I, I always say that you're on the helm for my live stream. I like that. It, sound, it sounds far more sort of grand, I suppose, and battle-like. So we're going into battle today uh, in a live stream, of course, in the live stream format, talking all about word differences between Britain and America. One of my favorite subjects, of course, I've covered it many times in videos over the years in different sort of topic areas. Um, but I wanted to say tonight, this perfect night, this Valentine's night, when most of you are probably at dinner and shouldn't be looking at your phones, but you are anyway. So I thank you for joining me uh, tonight. And, you know, I wanted to give you the opportunity to sort of just uh, throw at me your, your favorite word differences. And maybe I might be able to talk about some of the history of those word differences um, or just some of the experiences that I've had with them since leaving Britain and moving to the United States of America. Uh, quick shout out to my microphone who's right in my face, uh, not in a threatening way. I mean, this is, it's a very, it's very much a relationship that we have here now. And it's, it's got a new, uh, we've got a new stand that our patrons paid for. So thank you to our patrons. You know who you are. And uh, just a quick shout out to that. If you would like to uh, support us in a similar fashion, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Uh, so like I said, today we are going to be talking word differences. You may have seen the thumbnail, uh, a bit of an eye-catching one, since it has the word rubber in there. <laughs> Very funny, isn't it? I remember when I moved here and I went to school, which I never did. So actually, I, I have no stories with this one. I've heard from many parents who said that their British kid went into an American school and asked for a rubber, you know, to erase their pencil marks. And the teacher um, put them in detention. I doubt that actually happened, but it, it makes the story more dramatic and possibly more hilarious. Um, you, you, Tar, you worked in a, a British school, but here in the US um, with British people. Did you ever encounter this particular uh, issue with rubber and eraser? Uh, no, because my students were mostly very small or in theater. So mm -hmm. between those two things, we didn't really use a lot of rubbers. No, well, it is it is a word that, um, of course, I only used when I was at school. I think after I left school, my life kind of became paperless for the most part. So I, I just never really had to experience that particular problem. Um, but like I said, throw at me some of your favorite British and American word differences. And I can tell you a thing or two uh, from my own experiences um, of dealing with some of those uh those particular differences. Do we have any that have come through already? We have quite a few. Uh, one of them that I'm not familiar with, but maybe you will be from William Baker is nunny. Nunny? Yes. Nunny. What is nunny? I'm trying, is, is William suggesting this is, this is a British word? I, I'm assuming it's just a question mark next to it. Nunny? Now, if if William is familiar with the Grimsby area, as I am, having been from there, he may well be referring to the Nunsthorpe Estate, which is referred to as the Nunny. And it was a place that you you, you tried not to go near if you were from the Wybers um, or, or the Willows or anywhere, I think. But uh, that's just one example. Uh, what about word differences? Do we have any kind of, I don't know, you've, you've got rubber and eraser, but there are plenty more, most of them to do with food or cars, but we've done videos on those too. Um, any others? What do we have? Uh, Gary Kelleher uh, says knickers. Yes, knickers. Uh, absolutely. Less applies to my own underwear, unless it's Saturday night but we won't get into that. Um, but the, the interesting thing about knickers, of course, is that um, we have back home the phrase, don't get your knickers in a twist. In other words, don't get too antsy, don't get too uptight. But you have a very similar phrase here, which is along the lines of, don't get your panties in a bunch, right? Um, there may be other alternatives as well for those who don't like the word panties. I know that it is one of those um, words that sends tingles down some people's spine oh. um yeah absolutely but i think i found uh going back and looking at the etymology of both of those phrases that getting one's panties in a bunch actually predates getting your knickers in a twist huh. yeah so there's that one very well, interesting nonetheless no matter how you slice it you don't want to wear them too tight that's true because uh, you <laughs> might get a wedgie so i think we both say wedgie so we'll move on from that particular example there all right uh what about I really like this one. Yeah. A plaster. 
Indeed, a plaster. So I should have put on a plaster today because my cat uh, clawed the absolute, you know, out of me and uh, and it hurt. So it was bleeding for a little bit. And I ordinarily, in fact, when I first moved here, I did, in fact, ask my parents-in-law for a plaster for some scenario. And they didn't know what it was, of course. It possibly sounded like I was referring to the uh, thing that kept the walls in intact, um, whereas their their word of choice for it is the genericized term, Band-Aid. But I know that you could also go with bandage here as well um, and, and things of that nature. Band-Aid, to me, will always be the 1984 supergroup helmed by Bob Geldof. Uh, but that's that's that. But that, that is an interesting one. And the, the, the sense of Band-Aid is an interesting one because it seems like in the US, almost more than in Britain, I think, although I, I don't have any data to back this up, it's just instinctive, is that, that you do tend to genericize words or brand names. Like Band-Aid was a, a trademark and it just sort of fell into use to some extent just to refer to all kind of bandages, um, you know, regardless of whether it was, what, what was that trademark or not. Um, and that happens quite a lot in this country. I think of, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, what, what's, um, no, I don't think it's cling film that does this. We have cling film and you have plastic wrap, but you have another phrase for it. What is that? Saran wrap. Saran wrap. So yes, brand name, like exactly. Yes. Yeah. Saran wrap, another example of, of that occurring. Um, and I just see that really quite often here in the US and it's it's fascinating. I love this one as well. Uh, Violin suggests Q, which is actually spelled Q-U-E-U-E. -E. <laughs> yeah. And I used to see that word first moved to the UK and had no idea for probably half my time there the first time yeah. uh, as to what it even said, you know, in addition to the meaning. Yeah, the pronunciation of it, I can imagine, is I quite... Like, well, uh, quick, yeah. Well. It's like I couldn't figure it out. once again comes from French, uh, presumably, and yeah, it, it it was a strange one to me. We're it's always said that British people love to queue, right? I don't know that we love to queue, we just do it, and that feeds into the fact that we live in a country that's so it has such a high population density that you're you're more often than not queuing up. Um, but uh, yeah, I do find that one interesting. Americans quite often just say line, get in the line, I suppose. Yeah. Well, and the key there about the you know British liking to queue is that you do it without complaint. Like I was at the post office the other other day, and there was a woman who was right in front of me, uh, also waiting uh, to see you know the post lady, um, and and I was just sitting there, minding or standing there really minding my own business, and she turned back around to me and said, "What are they doing?" Like really angrily, and I'm like. Unbelievable! Like I don't know there, how to respond to that because I'm just waiting my turn too. <laughs> there are manners to be had when one is queuing. Um, I think there's an etiquette to it that I've never learned because I don't like standing still for too long. It's true, I queue for us. So uh, I, I, thank you very much for the drinks, Keith. Indeed, thank you, Keith. Thank you. And and before we go ahead and address Keith's comments, of course, if you would like to use the super chat and support this channel, support the acquisition of more equipment, you can also use the super chat. We'd be very very grateful. Um, but go ahead. Uh, what do we can get there from from Keith. Any oh, comments? He just said cheers. Oh, but you thank you. Have many many responses um, suggesting jumper, and mm. specifically the question of why they are called what they are. That's a very good question with jumper. It's not uh, an etymology I I remember looking into. I may well have done. Um, but one thing that I find interesting about this, we often talk about jumper versus sweater when we're talking about British versus American English. But I believe there is a you know a, a type of dress that ladies might wear in this country, um, or gents, you know, if they're feeling lucky, and um, that's also called a jumper. Um, and I think we sort of arrived at it was one of those things that has kind of you know straps and is also a dress. That's about the most interesting trivia I have about the word jumper. I wish I knew a little more. There's probably something quite interesting to go with that. Um, just a quick uh, mention there. Actually, I'm just going to grab something real quick. Uh, just to, um, it's Valentine's Day, and I want to just put a bit of heat into the air. I don't have hairspray on, do I, or gel? I can't remember. Not, I hope not. No, I'd be careful about that. Um, so it, love is in the air, of course. I just wanted to point out, today is my anniversary, Yay. isn't it? We're 12 years strong. Um, and really, for us, the British and American word differences 
kind of began around that time. I mean, we'd been together, Tara and I, for longer. Um, but yes, 12 years ago, ago today in a courthouse in Indiana, uh, we, you know, went through the motions of saying, I do, I do, I do, like the ABBA song. Um, and uh, I was really sick that day. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but uh, well, you knew, you remember. Um, and, uh, and to combat it, I took Mucinex that day. There's a difference. We don't have that brand, um, although that's not a genericized brand. But um, I'll let you know how the marriage is going once the drugs are worn off. Uh, so what uh, what else do we have in the comment? Well, I was going to say that even though you were quite ill that day, yep. it was almost like a holiday anyway. A holiday, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Jackson McMahon for that one. So what is a holiday? What is a holiday? Well, holiday is an interesting word. I mean, firstly, if you talk about it et etymologically, um, it simply comes from the words holy day put together, um, which, you know, relates to this idea of sort of rest um, on a holy day. And we take holidays, we even take holidays in the United States, you know, but there's there's sort of federally mandated holidays. Today would not be a good example of that. Uh, today is just Valentine's Day, um, but you know something like Christmas or July the fourth. But in England, it extends. We we do use that term uh, to to refer to bank holidays or or those same kind of holidays like Christmas. But it also refers to a vacation to take time away, just as uh, Tara and I are going to be doing in July because we're going to France and or England. Well, there's no and or we're doing both. So <laughs> yeah, that's... well, we're going to Ireland as well. We are going to Ireland. We're going to all Please. Might throw whales in there Maybe. just for a laugh. Not for a laugh. They I mean, I take it seriously. France and Ireland yet, so maybe that's we'll true. Well. That's true. Um, yeah, Raven. By the way, thank you very much. She has wished us a happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, and well, okay. So we've gone over our holiday. Mm -hmm. What about when people have? Um, to go to the loo. Well, to go to the loo, so obviously loo just by itself is a phrase that is supposedly unique to Britain, but I've actually seen it cropping up in the United States in parts. You'll sometimes see it on the side of doors, but often in an ironic way, as if to say, oh, we're down with the kids, or we we have a sort of international lingo about our way. Um, but you'll also see it sometimes in sort of authentic British pubs here too, just because people are very much aware of what that, that term is. But as I pointed out in a video that I did a while back, there's quite a lot of word differences when it comes to just bathrooms in general. Um, and that's always interesting because you've got faucet um, instead of, you know, tap. And uh, what's the other? I mean, there's plenty of Ball, others. Yeah. We are well, the the, exactly. There are a lot of euphemisms for toilets just in general, um, some, of, some of which cross over. Uh, but there's the old WC. Um, it's funny, though, because somebody asked me once, what's WC, right? And it's what we used to call in Britain a water closet. But but we don't really use that anymore. I mean, we might occasionally, again, in an ironic sense, but it's not one that um, it's not one that I typically use. I should say. What Do else? Do you use the bonnet for anything on your car? So I don't have a car, but I, I'm very, very familiar with what a bonnet is. And um, thank you, by the way, Vexity Vex, for that one. Yes, thank you. And um, indeed, you know, if if you are interested in sort of automobile-related differences check out a video I did uh, just recently on that very thing. In fact, look for the thumbnail in which I'm behind the wheel of a car, heavily photoshopped. Um, but it is just all about, you know, the, the myriad uh, differences that we have when it comes to the automobile and just driving in general. And um, they're all over the road. Uh, that was that was pun. It was intended. And I, I'm sorry I went there. It's Friday night. What can you do? And uh, it's fascinating. So you do have bonnet instead of, um, you know, what do I what what do you call it? Hood. Yes. Took me a moment there. I was about to say instead of boot, which is what we call trunk. And th those are among the more famous ones. But then you get into things like, you know, um, indicator versus either turn signal or blinker uh, in the United States. And just all of these sort of other things. I mean, there's absolutely loads of them. Uh, Scarlet Star asks a really good question. Um, she asks, what do you think is the weirdest difference? The weirdest difference? Um I think, I don't know if it's weirdest difference necessarily, but differences where 
there's a, an unexpected twist in the history of, of these word differences are uh, my favorite. Uh, they're my favorite to look into. I think we've talked about it many times, but you know how soccer was actually coined in Britain and, and all of that good stuff. Um, and so I, I think it's weird that we don't have a grasp of that history and that uh, particularly from the British point of view, we're so quick to jump on Americans for using the term soccer. But as I pointed out on Twitter the other day, not only did we coin it but if you look at a world map of where each word is used in the english speaking world more english speaking countries predominantly english speaking countries use the word soccer than britain uses football uh, so it's it's almost like britain's in the min minority uh, in some respect huh, with that. Interesting. that didn't really answer the question I, i'm going to give it some thought though because <laughs> weird weird definitely implies something that's quite like out there and i I'll... mean i still think that the soccer and um football one is a weird one Mm -hmm. And for the reason that you said, so, yeah, I mean, I that yeah, I think that counts. I suppose, I suppose, a really weird one is aluminum versus aluminium. I mean, yeah, and it, and is literally weird. And it also it does have the same kind of thing going on as soccer in that uh, aluminum originated in Britain, but it's just the the fact that they're so I don't know so subtly different. Um, but it but it also alters the pronunciation and not just the spelling. So I, I suppose that's an interesting and weird one for me. Hey, Brian, thank you very much for the drinks for our anniversary. He also wishes us a happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, and I was wondering, I can't remember, but what on earth is a quid? A quid. I mean, I can remember, but still, what is it? You're playing this so well, wife. She, <laughs> she knows all of the answers, but she knows that I'm the, I'm the expert here. So uh, a quid is, well, it's just another way of saying pound, a pound coin, that is. Um, so 20 quid. Um, I think I read recently that, um, that it probably comes from Latin, as in, you know, quid pro quo. Um, but I can't remember the, the true etymology of that. I'd have to go back and look at it. Uh, but we have we have an absolute plethora of words, either for a pound or just money in general, uh, so you have dosh and you have, uh, you know, that one, you have quid, uh, you have goodness. They're not coming to me right now. Uh, and that's Bob. because I've had coffee. Yeah. A few Bob. Yeah. Uh, all of that good stuff. Um, and, uh, I, I love that. There's, there's so many things in British English and a little bit in American English for which there are multiple words, you know, sex is one of those, um, drinking is another, so many words for drunk, it's unbelievable. Um, but not all of them cross over, some of them do. Uh, so there's a bit of a difference there too. Are lorry and trolley the same thing? A lorry and a trolley, no. Uh, so a lorry for us is a truck, um, but we also use the word truck as well. Um, but a, a trolley, most more often than not, is what you would refer to as a shopping cart a shopping trolley, but we might also use trolley in the same sense that you might use it um, here. So what? Wh how might you use a trolley, wife? I suppose in a hospital you could have a trolley, right? Uh, maybe. I think that we would be more likely to use the word trolley for the carts that you have at the grocery store. No. Yeah, a trolley. You'd use a cart, shopping right, cart. a trolley cart or a, a shopping cart. Shopping exactly. cart. Like, oh, right. But I'm saying that the word trolley here, um, how does that get utilized? I guess in terms of, um, well, kind of tram transportation, right? You get on the trolley? Yes, yeah, a trolley. Yeah. It's something you ride. That's true. Right. I think that's the most common usage here. Yeah. It, it suddenly came to me. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Muddy, for the drinks. Um, she asks, is chuffed still used? Mm. Um, because she first heard it on Keeping Up Appearances. So she's wondering. And she also wishes us a happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the word chuffed, it's it's a word that uh, now and again emanates from my own mouth. Uh, so I, I'd say that's, that's a good indicator that it's still alive and well. I use it. Uh, but as for whether the British people do or not, I, I don't know. I think they certainly did when I, I last lived there. But language can change just like that, especially in the digital age. And people are using sort of all manner of other terms. But it is a, that's a very good word to bring up, actually, because I think that the notion of happy or sad or an emotion of some kind is another thing for which there are multiple words across the board. And I love that. But chuffed is, is one of my favorites. Well, Jess Carter is also chuffed to bits that you mentioned it. Um, and I would like to 
just to mention as well that a lot of people are saying that in the South, people use buggy for a cart. Yes. And also there are people out West who do use trolley, like I said, for a cart as well. Oh, that's, so that's interesting. interesting yeah, that's interesting. I think, uh, you know, there are some words usually pertaining to things that have wheels that create uh, regional differences just within the United States. On the term buggy, I'm thinking of uh, prams, right? You might call them a stroller, or yeah. um, you might hear the term buggy. Or in in Britain, you could hear that. You could hear a pram when I was a kid, anyway. And then the other kind, the push chair, which isn't quite a pram. Uh, I I know an inordinate amount of baby stuff for somebody that doesn't have children. <laughs> um, Gary Kelleher is on fire tonight uh, and suggests. Tarmac is another word for you to go into detail on. It is, and and tarmac is it's not really a term you see here very often. Um, and I looked into this one weirdly the other day because I it seemed to me that the most direct equivalent of that would be asphalt um, for your roads. But it, it looks like they're not quite the same thing. Now, I'm not so technically expert enough to be able to tell you what is and isn't um, the equivalent of tarmac. Um, but tarmac is basically what we put on our roads to make them, you know, black and hard and they're really hot at first. And it's really exciting when you're a child and you see them putting that out there and the smell of it is really sickly. So it's pavement. No, 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 because pavement is sidewalk. This is where the, this is where the confusion is going to happen for sure. Uh, so no, but tarmac is an interesting word. Um, I'd have to look more into the history of that and sort of the the equivalents that it might be here because i'm not convinced asphalt is is quite right but i might be i might be wrong about being wrong i'd say that it depends on where you're from regionally when it comes to asphalt or um pavement or yeah even tarmac like mm -hmm. i feel like it's used in maybe the east somewhere maybe let us know in the right. comments for sure um, jeff lickman very good question um he asks do international internet um, companies like Amazon translate their websites for different versions of English. Um, do they use, for example, the words trolley instead of cart? That is a very good question and one to which I can't remember the answer. I would almost, I would almost imagine they stick to U.S. English. And I will say that when I lived in Britain, I do remember encountering a lot of programs or just sort of, you know, providers online um, using U.S. English. And sometimes, you know, when they ask you to choose your language, it will have the flag of the, you know, of, of English. It was often the American flag. And you just choose that. And uh, and so fine that I mean, I I'm I'm bilingual. Right. So I, I would do that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting one. But I do remember in the very early days of the Internet when I had, you know, um, AOL online. And uh, I think here, if you receive an email, it used to say um, you've got you got mail. Right. Like the film with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. But in England, it said you've got post in the voice of Joanna Lumley. <laughs> So I think I can uh, add a little bit of context to this as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that it depends on the websites because since international law is just that, it's international and it can't be dictated you know, across the entire world. Mm -hmm. If you have amazon.com versus amazon.co.uk, yeah. they will probably use a different type of English if they choose. Right. They don't necessarily have to, but that website can basically decide for itself. Is it going to be British English? Is it going to be American? Is it going to be some amalgamation of the, the two? I know that somewhere deep within your settings on Facebook, you can actually change which kind of English it is. Oh, nice. Um, and yeah. so I know like for a number of years, I had my Facebook settings as British English, which was kind of hilarious sometimes. I remember you could choose pirate English as well at one point. Yeah. I think right. it would be amazing if they threw a spanner in the works, monkey, what is it, wrench in the wrench in the works, yeah, right? right? Monkey wrench in the works. Um, mm -hmm. if uh, if they if everything was in Welsh and we all had to decipher, uh, then the <laughs> Welsh would rule the world, wouldn't yeah. they? So that would be interesting. Okay, well, what so, else do we have? First off, thank you, Gary and Edith, uh, for wishing us a happy anniversary. That's very uh, very sweet of you. Um, and then what about skiving? That is um, a good yeah. suggestion from Lisa Lawrence. Yes, yeah, skiving, something I never did at school because I, I was a model student. Oh, wait, I think, is my mom watching? 
I don't, if, <laughs> if she is, then just keep quiet, mum. Uh, skiving basically means to play truant from school. Uh, the I suppose the equivalent here is, what is that? It's not coming to me. Skipping. Skipping, but there are many others, I think. I think that might be another regional one, um, is to, you know, uh, play hooky, right? Is that one? Absolutely. Just came to me now. Play hooky from school. Well, we, yeah, we say skiving, but I think we might also have some regional differences over that one as well. Um, and it, yeah, just means to sort of head out of school and go smoke cigarettes, which I never did, honest. So, okay, what else do we have? Um, how about washroom? Again, Gary, mm -hmm. on fire. These are all really great suggestions. Yeah, washroom. Well, I suppose that's just sort of the equivalent to you know, a bathroom, right? Um, I think. I just can't remember which country uses it because it's never been a term that's been part of my own vocabulary, I don't think. <laughs> I do know that in Canada, they have a slightly different take on all of that, don't they? Um, I can't remember what it is. Um, may, uh, maybe it is washroom. Any Canadians watching tonight, what terminology do you use for public toilets or toilets or things of that nature? Let us know. Yes, please. Because um... that's the way this is going. <laughs> uh now everybody in the comments is just telling us what they use as, you know, skipping school. Good. So we've got ditching, we've got huh? flicking, I guess. Um, yeah. Flicking. That flicking school, yeah. Wow. All um, right. Right. Or ditching class. Yeah, I think I've class. Yeah, I've heard these ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I'm not familiar to, you know, it's not something I did commonly, but I know people that did. So I remember um, when I was a student in the UK, people used to say revise to me mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like with Q, I didn't really understand the context of it at first because yeah. for me as an American, revising honestly just means going over material that you've already studied. Like studying for it though, right? Is You're it... not really studying because you've already studied. This is literally yeah. just reminding yourself of yeah. that information after the studying part has happened. It's, it's reiteration, isn't it? But it's it's funny because like as an editor now in my adult life, the word revising has, has come to mean something entirely different. Um, whereas revising really is, it's, it's like the night before a test or an exam um, and you you just sit there and you just try to cram in all of the information that you need for the, you know, the test the next day. Which is um, here, it's cramming. That cramming, we yeah. yeah. And we, I think we would use the term cramming too. I think that did, you know, enter my vocabulary back in the day because I was one of those people, I was one of those people that was ahead of the game. I mean, I didn't need to do any last minute revision. Again, I'm saying this for the purposes of my mom, who I know will be watching this back tomorrow. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, well, I mean, before you go any further, let's just be honest about who was the better student between the two of us. Yeah, definitely me. All right, so next, next question, please, Your Honor. Wither you, please. She's look. She's giving me that look that says, "We've been married for twelve years. You better not say that again." <laughs> um, yeah, I was definitely the better student. I was the one who ended up on the dean's list a couple times. Whatever. I'm certain that you uh, only barely turned in some very important papers. Is that right? But I got an A in English. What else do you need? Next question. <laughs> Did you even have A? Yeah, I did. I got an A. I, I did in, at my A levels, not in the degree. I was going to say, at the degree, we didn't actually even have those, so I don't think that... Better not talk about the degree, because the university <laughs> could be watching right now. So, um, What's a car park? Well, a car park, quite uh, simply, is what you would call a parking lot here. Um, there isn't too much more to say about it than that. Um, but... Uh, well, there really isn't. Um, but again, it does feed into, you know, that the whole idea of just the, the notion and the world of driving is so terminologically different um, from country to country. And it makes sense because our auto industries sort of like, you know, expanded at different times, as did our roads. And so the methods by which we label those things um, was always going to be different. And we are more sort of in tune with uh, the European Union, um, although for how long, I don't know. And the United States obviously has its own sort of um, guidance on, on signage and just naming conventions and things like that. So when I was at college, 
I, you know, went to Lancaster mm -hmm. and I lived away from my parents and I was already of age yeah. and I did all of the things that you need to do to get a university degree. Yes. What did you do when you were at college? What do you mean? What did I do when I was at college? I did the same things, except I didn't move countries well, for it. Well, you didn't it. do the same things at all because college for you was something completely different. I see where you're going with <laughs> this. It's, it's the sherry that you haven't put in my coffee. Uh, yes. Yeah, so university or you know, quite casually, uni um, is something by which, you know, we label that particular building. But it's very interesting that we do that and that America, colloquially anyway, does not. But you will refer your, your institutions themselves, Butler University, for example, will contain the word university as opposed to college. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs, indeed. I don't have quite the affiliation that she does, but uh, still, it's it's um, something about which she's uh, marginally passionate. And, uh, and, and this is not just an example with Butler. You see this all across the land. Um, so it's interesting how that, that sort of split... Um, that, that usage but for us it's uh it's you know university is in general the, the the place of higher education and also just like here you will have york lancaster university etc cetera, etc cetera. but college for you also it's so confusing because yeah. uh, you can live in a college and you can be part of a college at university which we both were yes but you can also go to college which is not university this is true so what is that? That's that's sort of two years usually uh, where you take A levels, um, and you can either do that at a college or a sixth form a school, I suppose. And uh, I went to a sixth form college, um, and it's just the it's those two years before you go off to university, and it's that sort of final launch pad to say I have the grades to go to university. I have A levels basically, um, and that's the, that saved my skin because I made the decision while taking A levels do English and do drama. If I hadn't made that decision, I wouldn't be doing this YouTube channel today. It's Bold true. statement. All right. We wouldn't have met. Well, we wouldn't have met. That's that is true. That's unless you would have holidayed and studied in Grimsby, which seems very unlikely. Okay. <laughs> and on that note, I think we're done. Are you serious? It's that went eight thirty one. That was too fast. I just I want to stay on here and talk about this all night long. <laughs> all night week. long they're gonna demonetize me now i just did a famous song at the end there okay great well uh thank you everybody for tuning in and thank you for your uh suggestions this was a very lively lively chat uh we are gonna go now and i see the word wanker there from richard uh, there, <laughs> Thanks, Richard. <laughs> thank you. There are many, many, many uh, differences um, to do with that word. But um, yes, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we will be, of course, back again at the same time <laughs> next Friday. Um, Gunky Zip is your backup singer. Oh, good, good. All night. <laughs> there you go. Exactly, exactly. Um, we will have plenty more videos coming in the week. I would suggest that if you want to keep in tune, not in tune, that's, that's something I have a hard time doing on a Friday night. But if you'd like to keep in touch with me, you can do so on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. Be sure to head over there right now. Uh, but until next time, I bid you adieu and a very good night on this Valentine's night. Ta. Ta-ra. That's, that's goodbye. And thank you.